The aperture flicker is a really common issue, but what it is and why it happens. The aperture flicker is caused by the lens iris not being consistent in its size or shape during the animation. But why it changes? Well, every time we take a picture, the camera does the following. First, it sets the iris to the right f-stop. Then, it opens the mirror, it exposes the sensor to the right amount of time, it closes the mirror again, and then it leaves the iris as wide open as it goes, to allow the live view or viewfinder to have as much light as possible. So, every time we take a picture, the iris will move, and it's possible that it could be placed slightly different, and this would cause the flicker. Does it happen always? No, it only happens with automatic iris apertures, the modern ones. So the easiest way to avoid this type of flicker is using manual lens, those where you have a ring to control the iris. Because on those, every time you set an f-stop, it will remain that way all the time. But the real question for me is how badly this iris could move. And that's why I did this video. So let's find out. Here you are my setup to reveal the aperture flicker on this lens. This is a 50mm lens f1.2 L from Canon. And even this is expensive lens, you will see that it will make a flicker. And to test it, we have this camera that will be triggered from dragon frame. And we have another camera that is shooting the aperture inside the lens. And this one it's triggered from my phone to don't touch anything and don't get any vibrations. I will make a lot of pictures. So I trigger the camera, closes the aperture and I take a picture from my phone. Okay. Then I do it again. So another picture closes picture So yeah, it moves a lot, a lot more than I expected to see. In fact, I thought that it would be difficult to see it moving. And I did the same to the 24 to 70 mm zoom and it also moves. Now, as promised, three solutions to keep using any automatic lens. For the next tips, Keep in mind that you can damage your camera or lens, this is not something that you are supposed to do, so be careful and you are acting under your own risk. The first one, it's kind of silly, but if you shoot at the widest aperture, nothing will move. So our goal will be to block the iris to our desired depth stop. To do so, first we have to set the aperture as normal on the camera. Then, hold down the depth of field button, which will move the iris to the f-stop that we have set. And without releasing it, press the lens release button and turn slightly the lens, just a little bit. This will disengage the pins from the camera to the lens and the communication will be blocked. And so, the aperture. So there you have it. The, the danger in here is that the lens is not attached anymore so my recommendation would be to place a piece of tape and secure the lens. Next option starts the same, but you have to fully disengage the lens. Then you want to find a thin non-sticky tape. I like Scotch Magic tape because it works super nice. You should cut a small piece and cover just the group of two pins. That's enough, and you can then engage again the lens. 
the communication is blocked so the aperture will remain wherever it was. Every time you want to change the aperture, you should disengage, remove the tape and repeat the process. The risk here is that if the tape leaves residues in the pins, you might get an error from the camera. It's called error 01 and it's faulty communication. So you should be really careful not to damage the pins. Last thing to say here is that using this method you lose lens communication and so the live view exposure will be incorrect. So keep in mind to verify the exposure compensation on Dragon Frame. I've been using that tips for years and they solved the issue so well, so I hope you could also benefit from them. If so, I would appreciate so much if you could subscribe to the channel. I'm always making videos about stop motion. And if you really want to support the channel, visit my Patreon. It helps a lot to keep making videos. That's it, let me know in the comments if you have tried those methods or if you know another one. And till next one, bye!